Okay. Welcome to the PRAC meeting for the 22nd of September 2011. I am Brian Watt. I am the chair of the committee and to my right, <coughs> far right. Mike Mitchell. Don Smith. Lynn Betteridge. Stephen Orr. Brian Burke. Ted Shoemaker. It's Kai Staff. Okay, I know that all uh, everybody's had a chance to look at the minutes, and I'm standing by for a motion on our first agenda item there, the approval of the minutes from July 28th, our last meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, minutes from July 28th as is. Second. Okay. All in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 Okay, opposed? All right. The minutes from July 28, 2011 for the PRAC meeting are approved. Number three, moving right along. <coughs> Seeing no citizens, we will move to number four, which is general business. And we have a couple of items on general business. The first is a uh, update on the dog park and maybe just wrapping in the Maybe kind of summarizing for me also because I wasn't here at the last meeting and how uh, Nathan, Mr. Mr. or Master Maudlin's uh, presentation uh, went last time. I'm sure interested in that. I, did, I know him. He's on, a, on the swim team. So, Mike, did you want to update us on that? Yeah. Okay, okay super. I'll jump back and talk about Nathan. Okay, uh, Nathan super. Did, he came to the last crack meeting. He, uh, he came at Scott's request. He, uh, without knowing that Crack was pursuing the idea of a dog park had come up with that as an idea for his Eagle project and in fact had already gone to the city council with the idea in the public comment section uh, and spoke to them so he came to the PRAC meeting last time made a very impressive presentation he's a real impressive young man and uh, he uh, I think you could say we, we he still has to uh, wrap his arms around the idea that it may not get to a finished product in the time frame that he needs. So he has to work with the Scout Council to see if, you know, how far does it have to go down the road? Because it, there's supposed to be obviously something right. at the end that benefits your community. And given the reality of working, you know, funding, approvals, all of that, you know, we couldn't assure him that it, could, it may, maybe couldn't happen on the timeline he was talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, but he is very interested in being involved and in fact has been involved already. Um, the major thing that happened since the last PRAC meeting was our first uh, public meeting for the, the Friends of the Dog Park group. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an evening meeting in August, nice summer night. One of the things that we were hoping was to sort of see, okay, how many people really are interested, how many people are going to come out, you know, and, and uh, you know, come to this meeting. And uh, I was hoping for 20. Scott mentioned afterwards that he was sort of hoping for 20. There actually were 35. Uh, and uh, it was a lot of enthusiasm for it. Lynn was there, and I want to mm -hmm. thank Lynn. She made sure that we got everybody's email address before they even got into the room. She kind of checked them in and got their email addresses, and that was that was great. Ted awesome. was there as well. Excellent. And, and had a couple of nice comments. Appreciate that. Um, we spent, we talked a little bit about what had happened so far and talked about uh, some ideas about, you know, the uh, we discussed the shared, dedicated, Mm -hmm. Fence, not fence idea, and, and I think really it's, it was a real strong consensus that a dedicated fence park is the only thing worth pursuing. Uh, there's just too many issues and concerns with the idea of a shared park or, or whatever. So that's certainly the group's goal. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we spent a lot of time talking about was the need for a you know, public-private partnership, mm -hmm. city, interested individuals, businesses um, in order to generate financial or in-kind support not only for construction but for app for maintenance after the thing is done and I think everybody that was at that meeting understands just the reality of the way the funding is going to be that that's the only way it's going to happen is if we can get that kind of a partnership uh, and also I think everybody understood that 
the, the evidence anyway is that the most successful dog parks out there around here or, or you know, anywhere in the country, uh, they work better when there is a support group that's kind of mothering it along, mm -hmm. helping maintain the standards, mm -hmm. maintain the rules, whatever. Uh, so I think there was there was good understanding on that. Uh, we talked a little bit about sites. Um, nothing new really came up other th other than the ones that we've already talked about. Um, one did sort of get on the radar screen after that meeting, and that's it's not I don't think in the city limits, but it's actually a pretty good sized space on Leland Road. Uh, hey, it's a big, oh, hmm? keep it very general in locale. Okay, just because the potential of further talks of possible purchasing. Okay. Can I tip the sure. hat? Mm -hmm. Understand. Okay. Um, so I won't talk about that one too much. Um, the uh, a couple of other possibilities that we had talked about before, and there were people at the meetings that you know knew somebody that knew somebody, mm -hmm. and they were going to try to reach out and see if you know maybe there was some interest mm -hmm. on, on some of the ones that we've already talked about. Nothing really new on the on the site the side of things. Uh, we do have a Facebook page up, Friends of the Oregon City Dog Park, mm -hmm. Patrick put up there now 105 people that have friended that, and there's a lot of comments. So if you haven't looked at that, you could, should take a look at that. Uh, Jolene Maudlin, who's Nathan's yeah, mother, right. she has put up a website, so we actually have a Friends of the OC Dog Park mm -hmm. website, uh, and we'll use that for information. Um, there is an email address that we've publicized really just in order to help generate an email mailing list. There's about 45 names now on that mailing list. One of the comments that came in happened to be from uh, Commissioner Kathy Roth um, thanking Pratt for getting this on the agenda and uh, on the radar screen and also commenting that she and her husband in Dallas, Texas on vacation had visited a park that they called Bark Park <laughs> and actually had doggy playground equipment and wow. agility <laughs> course and just, I mean all sorts of amenities. She thought it was unbelievable so she was appreciative of that. Wow. Uh, from here we're going to have another meeting uh, when Scott gets back from his trip uh, we'll get a date set probably middle to the end of October. Uh, another organizational meeting and at least my idea coming out of that is that we would have you know, whether it's a board of directors or a steering committee or something a small group uh, independent of PRAC that PRAC would advise I guess um, to help keep this thing moving uh, we'd like to have someone move us through the process of getting nonprofit status for that group so they can start to collect Tax, tax deductible contributions, um, and then start brainstorming more on contribution ideas and uh, businesses that might want to be involved and, mm -hmm. and so forth. Uh, so that meeting will start publicizing here hopefully pretty soon, and I, like I said, shooting for middle of the end of October. Um, is that yeah. the organizational meeting that you had mentioned? Is that mm -hmm. is that first one just with the staff, no. or is that going to be okay? Well, we already had one, mm -hmm. and that was that was really the first thing that we had announced publicly. Mm -hmm. It was in the newspaper and, and so forth, and that's what got the 35 people here. And we'll publicize this next one the same way. It's mm -hmm. not, um, I'm sure Scott or Denise are both, we want them there. Uh, but it's, it's not a city meeting, although we did have it here. We made it clear that this mm -hmm. wasn't a city meeting. It was an interest group of citizens mm -hmm. meeting. So, so we don't kick in the, you know, the public meeting mm -hmm. and, and, and all of that stuff because it really is something that needs to kind of bubble up from this interest group. Um, I think that's what I wanted to say. So that okay. we'll make sure all of you, yeah. of course, know about that meeting. It's, like I'd say, probably mid to late October. Um, interesting, when I talked to the reporter from the South Oregonian about publicizing that first meeting, he said... Uh, you know, I've been covering Oregon City and South Metro for a long time. He said, and the Off Leash Dog Park has been on Pratt's agenda a lot of different times for quite a while. He said, are you going to get some traction this time? And I, I think it is. I really think, I, I think there's some traction there, for sure. 
Lynn, is that anything you want to add from that meeting? Well, I had the sense that another piece of good news was that there was at least one individual who had some experience with grant applications right. for mm -hmm. funding. Mm -hmm. So getting that kind of enthusiasm and putting their name on the line to help with that, I thought was really a big step. Yeah, I, you know, my answer to, uh, to that reporter's uh, question would be I mean, you, you certainly had traction at that meeting. I mean, I, I, I'd be, I mean, I think it'd be reasonable to call that a good kickoff. I mean, um, I thought it was really well ran. I mean, you were, seemed really prepared as to what you wanted to accomplish in that meeting. Like you said, the enthusiasm was good. You had a little higher turnout than you had hoped for, than your target was. Um, I thought it was great. And you know, I really liked, too, how as that thing, you know, you kind of had a time limit as it kind of winded down, you got to a point where you said, okay, let's reel it in a little bit and here's, here's what I want to make sure we get accomplished by the end of this meeting. And then you went, down, went to writing down some, putting some things on paper from, from, from people as far as what it would take to get the, the dog park. Uh, you know, you talked about some funding things and locations and, you know, things that the community would like to see at the dog park. Did doggy play equipment ever get on that uh, <laughs> flip chart? I, I think somebody might have mentioned agility stuff, but I, yeah? I, I don't think doggy play stuff. I, I've never heard of that before, but that sounds cool. <laughs> that, I don't know if you, you get that Parks and Recreation magazine. It's got, there's companies in there. Is that there? Are yeah. Trying. In fact, there's somebody in Oregon City who is a rep for one of those companies, and I've already heard from her, too. I imagine a person could get real creative with doggy play equipment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rainbow colored fire hydrants or whatever. Doggy zip lines. <laughs> <laughs> little dog, getting your little doggy harness. Yeah. Here we go. <coughs> so it's kind of fun to see this, right. this take off. Good job. So just um, for the next meeting, I mean, as soon as as soon as we can get uh, an idea of the agenda or the things that you are are planning on. I mean, it sounds great. I like I like what the, Ted said and, and Lynn and you that there was that the structure and also the your organizational skills and getting that you know meeting um, winding it up or wrapping it up in the right way to make sure that you had certain things covered it was great. Um, I think you know I think about a timeline. You know, Nathan. You know, it may not be it may not be a uh, a project that he could um, hang his hat on there for that for his Eagle Scout. I don't know. I don't know what the what the board or the the council or whatever uh, is it the Scout Council that yeah. he mentioned. Yeah. I don't know what what they would what they would think about that, but I think we should probably concern ourselves for a number of different reasons about maybe a, a, a proposed timeline. I think I think timelines help. It's like setting a goal. You know, if, mm -hmm. if you've got a timeline of when you think or when you want things to happen, you know, sometimes they're self-fulfilling because it presses us to, to make to make some decisions. So if I mean if I don't uh, you know I'm just I'm just talking. <laughs> if that can be done, that would be great. And then and then we could maybe maybe we could let uh, Nathan know at some point. I don't know when his due when his due date is for his. Uh, I think this. that's a little up in the air, too. Yeah. Those are both really good points, though. I mean, yeah. a timeline would be very productive for that project. Well, if, if you go to the website, it says Memorial Day next year. Okay. Uh -huh. that, I think Jolene put that on there. Oh, so did she, she really? She okay. Didn't from, she didn't get it from me, but she said, wouldn't it be great if we could do that, you know? Oh, you know, okay. So Jolene is, uh, she's, she's, got, she's, she's okay. All right. But, but right. big difference between a timeline and a, you, you know, a wish right. list for a completion date. You're right. You know, I mean. Absolutely. Absolutely. Kind of, kind of detailing what all needs to happen between to get yeah. there. And put it, put it to a calendar. I think it's a real good idea. Yeah. And that would be pretty high up on the list for that, whatever that steering committee. Yeah. Being, getting, right. Trying to get a timeline mm -hmm. on it and start even start to think about budget. Mm -hmm. Because that's budget's going to affect the timeline. So I've written down just a few notes here, and I'll, I can send it out an email too. But 
possible sites would still be on the agenda, obviously. Types of parks would probably, um, you know, the finalization, I guess, of the type of park, although it's, it sounds like you guys were um, pretty, uh, at least in that first, first meeting, were pretty set on that, at least from the data that was presented. Grants or funding, so I, I mean, uh, I like that I like that Lynn, um, you know, Lynn mentioned that that was on my mind too because that's one one uh, one way one possibility or you know multiple grants. Uh, I still I still am thinking you know Britt Brit Tucker Oregon City High School uh, construction class. Now I'm seeing doggy things, you know, doggy play things, and I don't know so. Because well, that uh, uh, fencing, perhaps. Yeah, I know. I, in the beginning, I was having trouble of thinking of what what would they actually be constructing. But now I'm 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 well, a, a covered structure. Yeah, covered. Up, yeah, covered area. In the in the amenities part of the discussion, given our wonderful weather. I don't. You know, I I I don't think Nathan attends Oregon City High School. He's on the swim team, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, so. And uh, the timeline. Those are the things I had. I had wrote down five things there. So, anyway, I think this is awesome. It's just another Anybody example, I think, of our. Shooting my way agenda kind of things. It's another example of our moving the ball forward. So let's keep doing that. It's fantastic. Anything else on on doggy? How, how are we moving the doggy bone forward? I mean, well, you, you said ball, and I'm like ball. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> squirrel. Too much. Up. Too much. <laughs> yeah. Up. <laughs> okay. So we'll move on uh, to for Bravo. That's for you, Ted. <laughs> We're keeping the phonetics going here. For Bravo <laughs> Pocket Parks. Excellent job, Brian. Yes. 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 So. Could you guys get me up to speed on, on where we left off on that last time? Scott handed out some information from the 2002 ballot measure, um, and it was the Preston Gates Ellis document that you guys received. And I think we left it off where we were looking at um, forming a subcommittee to look at specific sites. Specific sites that would be good candidates to potential candidates to disposition. disposition. Um, and the Preston Gates Ellis memorandum has um, the sites that were proposed in 2002 mm -hmm. on the measure that ballot measure itself. So I think you guys are looking at forming a subcommittee and. Uh, discussing what's on the list, what's not on the list, and what you would like on the list for this next go around if you choose to pursue that. So we don't have to necessarily discuss the properties here, but right. in that subcommittee, if there's an interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, comments on that, guys? Yeah, and I think I've got those two. I've got the commission report um, and the Preston Gates Ellis report, uh, July 31st, 2002. The next thing that needs to happen then, form form a subcommittee. Is that? I was thinking that that, that, that would be it. That would be the next thing that we do, and then uh, and and we we were waiting on this just like we were in other cases to to get the approval or tacit approval of the commission and I think we've got actually both the approval of the commission to go forward with it in, in order to if we needed to, to the staff to help us you know Scott or Denise or or someone else on staff to help us with this process <coughs> of identifying I'm thinking you know I think Larry I think Larry Larry I think uh, would have a fantastic opinion for us on on I mean, that's the no-brainer, sorry. I mean, I'm just stating the obvious. I'm the master of the obvious. And who he's talking about is Larry Potter, our park maintenance supervisor. Yeah, so Larry Potter, I think that's one of the first things we need to do. We form the subcommittee, and then we bring in Larry, and we start discussing 
these things, you know, potential sites for disposition, because we can't go forward, but, you know, with our own individual knowledge, limited knowledge, we need to include somebody who really knows how much time they spend on each of these. And, uh, and then not only do we know, need to know that, we need to know, and this is another expertise that we don't have, I don't, I'm just assuming, um, how much is that property worth? And then we can then we can talk about also what's in what's in these reports, which properties were up before and why. And then we can do some sort of a cost benefit analysis on well, we could gain this much because we know we wouldn't have to maintain it. That equals a dollar value. Uh, it also equals a, there's a dollar value associated with the potential sale of that property. Although once it's you know, we have disposition of that property. It doesn't mean we have to sell it, but we could we could assign a value of uh, a dollar figure to that, so that we can make a an informed decision on whether or not it's a good idea. But you know, after all of that, we still have to factor in the neighborhood associations, or after, or before, or during uh, the neighborhood associations, the uh, citizens, CIC. Inf uh, Involvement, Involvement committee. committee, the CIC. So the NAs, the CIC, have to be involved at some point. We need to we need to bring them into the loop at some point, and um, and all of that plus you know other things that I've forgotten need to be presented to the to the voter at some point if we are indeed uh, along the line continuing to go forward on it. What do you guys think? Yeah, it definitely sounds like a committee type work. So enough between coming up with the guidelines, which I think would be really important to come up with guidelines. And so instead of just picking parks here and there, if we would have a some type of guideline would be helpful. I think. Mm -hmm. But that's that's going to take work and more than I think we could do here on a Thursday night. Other thoughts, guys? Sound like something we can we can tackle? Okay. Any volunteers? Yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 that's the big part. I think all of those are important. I mean, to you want to get this thing on the ballot and really and, and and for it to be effective. I wouldn't argue with anything you said as far as the legwork up front. I wonder how effect, uh, effective of a cost analysis you could do. And I would think Larry would really need to be involved in that aspect of it. I mean, the Citizen Involvement Committee, too. I, I, I'm I'd be interested to know how much input they would have. I, mean, I think they would probably be coming at it more from a generality standpoint, like we are. So uh, I guess I kind of agree with Brian that that subcommittee would be pretty key to really dig in and dig into the details. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach the end of my term here pretty soon, um, or I might you know something I might be interested in doing, but it'd probably be better for a for a PRAC member. Mm -hmm. Going forward, and I can see that, you know, extending mm -hmm. quite some time. Mm -hmm. For sure. So, like the rest of you, I have an excuse for not volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> Would the subcommittee have to be entirely made of members of PRAC? Do you think, Denise? I don't think so. Um, we've done task force with a member. And other people from the community um, I think there needs to be some I mean, we're bringing it forward so right. we probably need to kind of lead that charge or it might not we PRAC needs to lead that charge yeah, if that's true. the direction you want to go so good very good point um, so if we involved you know right away the neighborhood associations with it 
and invited them or in, included them in this process, that would be uh, that would be I think I think very very important because after all, it's going to go to vote. Uh, this is we we are only going to offer up this as a good idea and an informed hopefully informed and good idea, and we're going to let potentially the voters decide. And and one really good sample of the voters in Oregon City is is the CIC. So yeah, that's a great, really great idea. Yeah, I think the, the neighborhood associations are going to be a, a great source of people because they're they're going to be they're going to be on this uh, at least the active ones as soon as the word gets out there that this is being considered. I I think you're going to start hearing from neighborhood associations wanting to be involved because I mean there's probably some that don't want to see it go away, any of them go away, there's probably others that are there, the ones that we're not able to do anything with that would rather see the money spent somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I think neighborhood associations are going to jump all over that process, being a part of that process. Um, it, it seems to me that if you, if you break it out in its elements, what everybody's talked about, there's, there's the maintenance costs, which uh, Mr. Potter would probably be the expert on that. So this subcommittee or group you're trying to put together can probably chalk that off their list. They're just looking for an answer that they really are equipped to come up with on their own. And then there's a risk analysis, which I don't know how much they want to employ attorney time, but you know they understand some of these are attractive nuisance or um, potentially even a fire hazard or or whatever else. And that to me is something else that's left to another expert. Um, Mm -hmm. And the price is obviously an appraiser question, mm -hmm. which really leaves the neighborhood association. Um, so it seems to me what we're looking for is somebody to shepherd it more than, you know, to pull these answers together. I don't think it's as complex as it seems. Um, I yeah. think the neighborhood association could make or break it, no matter how much work is done here. Plus it's part of our due diligence if, if we or the, the commission is going to present this to the the voters of Oregon City. We, I mean, it would be kind of silly to say, or to it, for it to come up that we never really consulted anybody in the city during this whole process. But I also see at a, at some point it's going to be it's going to be a, a process where the there's going to be open meetings for people to understand what's on the ballot, what's going to be on the ballot. What do you think, Denise? There's a couple of tacks that you can pursue. You can create a subcommittee within this group, fetter out some of the process, um, the guidelines, that sort of fine-tuning the pieces that you want to discuss and bring those forth. Um, you could potentially have your sites that you're looking at rolled up into this as, as a draft and then present that to each neighborhood and get, garner their input at each of their meetings rather than add meetings on top of meetings or you can you can go with you know somebody or a couple people from PRAC and then try and garner people from those neighborhood association meetings or whoever you feel are stakeholders in this and pull it together that way so it, it really is kind of up to you guys how you want to fetter this out um, sometimes it's easier to present something mm -hmm. and and get an agreement on it or mm -hmm. a disagreement on it rather than float the whole boat out there and see how many pieces get put back together. Mm -hmm. um, and it just depends on how you feel you want to utilize your time. So you, Denise, just to, just to repeat back what you said, we could either do what we just proposed or, or like, you, like you said, solve certain elements of it here first and then be able to present a straw man or a, a, a briefing or a certain part of it that makes sense and we've already done certain work already. Yeah. Okay. So do you know of a, a set of standards that we could apply or a matrix that we might work from? That they have, um, you know, they've, they've kind of invented the wheel on the first go around and if you guys want to, to kind of analyze that tack that they took decide if that was that's the same guidelines you wish to approach it with or if you want to have a different perspective on that approach so that I think that I, I obviously wasn't here in 2002 but they had 
some sort of set of guidelines in order to put that forth. So I would maybe, um, I would have to go back to maybe Scott on that one since I wasn't here when that was um, pushed forward. But I, you know, anytime that something like this has gone through, there has been some sort of guidelines or process that had occurred. And instead of reinventing the wheel, you might want to take a look at that and decide that, you know, they were on the right track and maybe missed mm -hmm. a few different perspectives that mm -hmm. you folks have. Or prospectively, that's not the direction you want to head and then add to or subtract from. I think at minimum, we should at least review what process mm -hmm. they did, just, just, just to ensure we're not missing anything. That's a good, good point, Don. Yep. You know, there might be a good template out there. <clears throat> I think what I was asking was, was along those lines, but is there outside of the, of or you know, the national parks and rec? Industry Association, because they have park standards, and I wondered if we could apply such a standard to maybe flesh out which ones are not really up, ever going to be up to that standard. Uh, there are national park standards, and then there's what is reality perspective for Oregon City. Will we ever meet all those national standards? That might be um, a far-reaching way to go about it, because of the way the national standards are set up versus what we feasibly can can do and have in Oregon City. Um, the standards differ just slightly from what we typically have versus what's out there. And typically when you, you talk about bigger parks, they are bigger parks. So some of our smaller parks might not meet the standard for even their small park standards. So that's that's kind of the give and take when you look at a national standard. Why that that couldn't be a component, though? Mm -hmm. it that, definitely mm -hmm. can be. that we and could I, possibly. I think that utilize. we even have discussed in, amongst this group. I think when I started, um, a minimal standard of what we want as a park in Oregon City, because we were mm -hmm. talking about those um, pocket parks and the private neighborhood parks, whether we wanted to take onus on those or not. And I, I don't remember what Scott would remember. Um, I had just just arrived here when that discussion occurred, but I, I do remember that we had a minimal standard that we were looking at to take those smaller parks. Okay, any more comments on that? All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I am going to uh, fashion um, an email here and sort of summarize what we've talked about. And um, is it, what do you guys think? I'll ask you for one opinion. What do you think about coming up with um, a certain basis or uh, information or um, a start? Should we start on it? Shall we? In other words, limit the scope of the discussion before we go out. So in other words, should we have our own subcommittee and then go out beyond, beyond? Um, when you, when that's you my, start, my... You mean to start with a list? Yeah, in other words, our subcommittee would meet <coughs> with uh, Larry Potter and do certain, make certain steps to include reading the reports from last time and determining the methodology they use to determine you know, we, there's some things that are known that we should know before we sit and talk to other people about it. In other words, what happened last time? Well, you know, this is part of the process. We're learning with you. Well, that's not as good of an answer as this is this is the methodology they used last time. Boom, boom, boom. This is why we're we're here, and we think that this is where we need to go this time. What if, because this meeting is intended to be viewed by citizens that we get a kind of this is what we did this is how it all happened by people who were here in this meeting and we figure out where we want to go from there because again I'm probably who knows the 20th person who's asked the same question what happened before 
Yeah. And the answer is read, read it. But the, to the well, we spend just as much time trying to get the citizens to understand what we understand behind closed doors that now we put this subcommittee and they go research all this and determine what happened. They're going to be facing the same challenge as trying to recommunicate what they just relearned, if you will. So I'm wondering if we could get it to happen in front of this whole body. Kind of a historical perspective. Of what happened? Mm -hmm. That would be a, a question for you, I guess. Or Scott. I would, I would have Scott. to defer that to Scott. Yeah, um, that so. definitely was. Part In other of words, my do time. we have the do, do we have that knowledge, or would we have to fly somebody out from New York City? You know, after, <laughs> after Oregon City, they go to New York City, and you know. I would I would think there'd still be somebody who was on crack at that time. In panel, Scott wasn't here. I think yeah. Scott might not have been here. Was he here at the tail end of this, I because. Yeah, I, he's a couple I recall, years ahead of me. We talked about it before. He was he got here just after it had happened. I believe so. Yeah, but if we could, I, I think that's a great idea that Don has. If we could reach out to somebody who was on crack and have them come to the citizen comment part and fill us in, why it, what their method was and why it failed. That's, yeah, exactly. Um, I spend a lot of time reading business literature and. Uh, and I read some more about the failures than the successes because that's where the that's where you learn. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, so that'll be in that email too. And then I'll just what I'll do is I'll I'll fill a hat with the names and I'll pull I'll take Ted's oh. name hat <laughs> name out and then I'll pull a name out of the hat and then I'll email to make sure that everybody knows that that's the person that's heading it up. Hmm. <laughs> or not. Do I have any volunteers for that? I think I could probably step up and work on that. Does that sound interesting to you too, Brian? Yeah. Yeah, it is really interesting. Really, really interesting. Okay. Are you trying to sell it here? No, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't have another job that I had just started on September 7th, I'm a teacher now, by the way, Congrats. I would be, I'd probably be volunteering for that job. I don't know. I may be a little bit crazy, but that sounds interesting to me. Okay, Brian. All right. I'll send it out an email, and if I don't get the email right, you guys let me know, okay? Okay. All right. Anything else? So the members of the subcommittee? Just Brian. Sounds like it. Okay. I just want to make <laughs> so sure you're committee that. for now. Yeah, and then, you know, if somebody else wants to, to jump on board, too. So think about it. Let, just let that settle and simmer. And I, I would, I'm interested, definitely, yeah. but I really want to find out the perspective first. Yeah. Whether or not what we're stepping in. Um, I just Impossible, have possible. Speaking to a citizen who's lived here for 50 years, and they go, oh, that whole pile. Oh, yeah, let's go there again. And I want to hear that story before I decide whether I want to go down Good the road. Good point, yeah. yeah. Inefficiency. <laughs> That's being pragmatic, I think, isn't it? Is that pragmatic? I think it is pragmatic. Or practical, to, maybe. I don't under know. Under promise and over deliver. That's what I'm shooting for. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Let's move on to um, for Charlie. So we have received an invitation from um, the TSP group. They are going to be updating the TSP, which is our transportation system plan, um, and they have asked for stakeholders to be involved. And what they're looking for from PRAC is a primary and an alternate to participate in this um, committee meetings. Uh, it looks like they will be reviewing the technical um, information as well as associated documents and attending meetings um, between February 2012 and September 2012, and it just says additional meetings may be scheduled as needed. Scott is the primary from our department, and I am the alternate from our department. Um, in conjunction with the TSP, we are also trying to update um, our Parks Trails Master Plan. Um, we're doing some minor tweaking to that, and it will be wrapped up into this TSP update. Mm -hmm, right. So um, from PRAC, we are looking for one primary and one alternate to participate in this TSP 
process. You want to be dual hatted? Well, I don't think it'll work because I'm already on the technical advisory <laughs> team instead of the stakeholder advisory team. This, this is highway stuff. This is there's more acronyms than the military. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. I, I'll, I'll be the judge of that. The other night. Um, I don't have to go backwards. I have a board meeting that night. It says on here on Wednesday, October 12th. I just skimmed it real quick, but does that, that's where the meeting is? Oh, no, that's, that's no. just a confirmation of the deadline. That's oh, just a confirmation of the participation. So you're back in. You are <laughs> back in. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was fast. They tried. They tried. <laughs> and, and, and that is why they're asking for a primary and an alternate, is if there are commitments that we still have somebody participating from Pratt. Can I throw in just a couple other things? Thank you. All of the product that comes out of this, as it's in draft form, it's all going to be on a website, and anybody's going to be able to comment on it also. Mm -hmm. This is not going to take, this stakeholder advisory team is not going to take a ton of time, I don't think. What they're looking for from Pratt, they're trying to create a, a very balanced plan, not just automobile-oriented, bike-oriented, pedestrian-oriented. Right. And this kind of goes back into your wheelhouse, Brian, talking about trail interconnects and, mm -hmm. and connecting all of the resources that we have. Centers so of gravity. Looking at, uh, from the Pratt perspective, would be bikes and walking, mm -hmm. not only as a way to get around the city, you know, to get from point A to point B, but also as a recreational thing and, and how, do, how does the whole transportation plan account for all of those different means of transportation. That's, that's why they want to get all mm -hmm. this different right. stakeholder involvement. So, that's that. Thanks, Mike. That, that was a really, that was a good comprehensive yeah. way to, to put a technical plan out there. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> They're but, not looking for somebody to analyze the technical right. part of it. They're looking for right. somebody to look at, at the big Global picture. And aspects. how does this work for all of the different transportation methods. And yeah, and how, and how does it fit into our revision of the, of the, the trails master plan, right. for instance. Right. I mean, I could see that. I mean, people looking at Don, wondering that. Mm. Mm. Some homework to do. <laughs> <laughs> do we have an alternate? Since Mike can't have the dual hat system going. Marty. Okay, hey, yeah. <laughs> I heard Marty talking about trails just the other day and how much he <laughs> loved them. <laughs> we float that by Marty. Yeah, Brian? we should ask Marty if, if he's willing to do that. Or we could just vote it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Patrick's not here. Yeah, Pat, Patrick's <laughs> also a good candidate. Patrick would, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Steve, are you interested in that? Uh, I wouldn't be able to do that. Oh, you wouldn't be? No, okay. I wouldn't be too okay. interested in that. Okay, so let's ask Patrick or um, uh, Marty. So, since my name's on it only, uh, how do you suggest that I make sure that the interests on this committee are served when I go to that meeting? I think that you can still via the information that's going to be posted, like Mike had said, um, you can direct the PRAC that this is out there, this is where we're at, you can give them a summary format of information and then ask if they have concerns or questions and then you can relay that back to the, it doesn't have to be formalized in this setting necessarily just because of the timing of the meetings. But it may serve a purpose that with the four meetings spread out during that duration that we can have an update mm -hmm. and an input session here at this forum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for technical stuff, I mean, Don, you're, you're going to be sitting there, obviously, and Denise and Scott are going to be there, and or, and if, you know, questions are coming up about the trails or whatever, but, but I, I, I was on the, uh, the Carnegie Center Task Force, and, and I, I knew little about the process, but I definitely had opinion, and I had, and I had understanding of what we had talked about, about, tra in this case, trails, et cetera, so then I would bring that back to the, to the PRAC, and we would talk about it, and, 
So yeah. Good. And Don, this these groups are not going to aren't going to have to create a plan from nothing. They're going to be reviewing draft stuff that has already been done and tweaking mm -hmm. whatever. So you're not starting from zero with a bunch of people in a room. You're going to have something to refer to and then have input on. And then everybody's input will compile into a draft format that will then be presented to the Planning Commission for review as well as City Commission and then public hearings. So there is a process beyond steps, our mm -hmm. input into okay. this process, yeah. Denise, can I ask how, how uh, uh, extensive the change in, in that the uh, Trails Master Plan is going to be? Is it going to be it's going to be relative, bottom? It's, it's going to be relatively minor in comparison okay. to the All entirety. Right. Yeah. We just don't have the resources to do an extensive overhaul. We're just going to make some adjustments to what we already have that's just not denoted. Um, we're going to talk about signage. Um, we're going to talk about items that have been de newly developed and part of that is okay. with the TSP that we have newly developed areas with sidewalks or um, some paths that were put in that just aren't identified on our systems map. Is, do you think it'll reflect more of a, of a, not that it doesn't right now, I mean it talks certainly about the, the trail systems, sort of what I call the center of gravity around this part of the, this. We're going to much like because I hear you talking about over well, the course of the last few months and it just seems like that you know we're focusing here and we're going out we're gonna focus on this area mainly because we have been doing development through the Cove Clockamite River Trail mm -hmm. into the right. Clockamite Park matching up with John Storm and it continues on with the 99E Boulevard right. as well as having some signage that it will occur through the downtown area with um, the downtown manager, Lloyd Purdy, is working on that project. Mm -hmm. And for us just to continue the momentum of that right. and bringing it back up to, say, sites that we are knowledgeable that have connections to those areas and not be looking at, at this point, just because of resources and time and staffing levels, taking and saying, okay, we know we can get from point A to point B. Let's map it. And even more simplified, Let's put a marketing plan out there. Let's let's mm -hmm. show people where they're at. Signage, you know, low expense, high impact. That's mm -hmm. kind of what we're looking at. Right. And there's already momentum, like you, like you said. Is, was it a thirty-five thousand dollar grant or twenty-five that that? Um, what's it? The, the friends downtown. Of, yeah, the downtown. I don't rem recall what the total yeah. grant dollar was on that. Yeah. It would okay. Be in the metro enhancement, right? I yeah. believe that was a metro enhancement grant. So it would be a 25 maximum. 25, 25 is the max. Is the max yeah. What it, well then, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be counterproductive for Don to just read the Trails Master Plan. I mean, would would he be reading some extraneous information that's going away or? No, I don't think that we're going to change a lot of that verbiage. We're looking more towards the mapping product and then yeah. adding in some marketing um, using the web and also producing some mapping cool. products. I read it pretty. You've already, pretty, I think, pretty good when I had my bug. Yeah, and, I was going through, yeah. Uh, I remember you said you read you read the master plan. That was and the last time I seen the yeah. board, actually. <laughs> <laughs> good. Cool. See, you're ahead of the game. Way ahead. Thanks for uh, volunteering. <laughs> okay, and the, oh yeah, the invitation. If you hadn't seen that, you guys. The invitation was included in our, our report there as a document. Okay. Hmm. Prac member terms. I, I guess I didn't uh, look, know this was coming up. Let's talk about that. We have um, Ted here who is expiring at the end of December. He's expiring. <laughs> <laughs> his term is term. expiring. Term. I've heard um, that before. So he has reached his term <clears throat> limit and is not available to um, reapply. However, Mike Mitchell and Don Smith are also reaching their term limit um, and have, my understanding, not your term limit, your appointment limit. Um, and so you do still have availability to the term limit. This is appointed by our mayor, so it's a mayoral appointment. 
Um, so you can apply, but the mayor does look at those appointments, applications, and he makes the decision. Is, it, is there any way, I got that email, is there any way I can resubmit my application I just filled out only a few months ago? Sure. Just send it back to Nancy Ide. Okay. And just let her know that you made some edits. Okay. Um, there is an advertisement. Can you need a letter of recommendation? <laughs> I'll, I'll submit one for you. You're still selling. <laughs> Get in there and sell. They have posted advertisements for all openings on the boards and commissions. Sorry. That is on the website if you are interested. And I believe the application is also available. Awesome. So you guys are both reapplying? I'm not aware of what the deadline is off the top of my head. Oh, okay. Thanks, guys. It would be great to have you guys continue on the committee. Denise, is the term limit thing, is that, a, is that a city charter thing, or is that just what this group has said? Uh, it is, a, I believe it's, I don't know if it's charter, but it is part of the bylaws of this group. I'm not sure beyond the PRAC bylaws if there's a city charter either. I think the bylaws uphold that end of it. The only place I've seen it. Two and out. Just, well, just trying to figure a way to change the really keep Ted around. That's what I'm working on. Yeah, okay. I saw it over here. I think, we, I think Sean Dashler had We tried it. We've tried yeah, it. They, <laughs> they denied it. Rejected. No. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the old, that was the, that was the outgoing mayor. So so maybe we could try that again. <laughs> the new mayor in there. <laughs> Approved. Ted. When I first, I mean, I'm, I'm really glad that you, you have been here, okay? Thanks, Brian. Really glad, because I mean, I saw everybody disappearing, and I knew that you were still going to be on the committee, and I was comfortable. Just want to let you know that. Are you saying that? It's a good committee. Yeah. Well, and I think there's so much that's technical about this that really coming up to speed takes a while. Seriously. Yeah, let alone the changing. It, it seems a shame to limit that way. Hey, it doesn't have to stay that way. So when you limit out, how many years have to sit out? I think it's two and, two and you're done. I don't think you can oh. come back. I don't think there was a, a buffer of time before you could reapply. My understanding was that it was two and you're done. Good question. No, don't let the door hit you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They didn't say that to Governor Kitzhopper, did they? <laughs> That's right. You could have been PRAC member of the year, man, and you're still out the door. <laughs> it says, no committee member shall serve more than two consecutive terms. Ooh. Oh. That's, that's all it says, huh? I don't think it, I don't see anything that says anything about her. Uh, you oh. can't have a break in service and come back. Interesting. Mary, I'm not sure how he feels about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it, I, do I have a lifetime goal to serve on track? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you, well, what, what you're saying is that. you're moving on? <laughs> you want to move on at some point? <laughs> I, I might just want to move on at some point. <laughs> Nothing personal. Oh dear. So it, does, it doesn't, there's nothing in here that currently states it precludes you from taking a break and coming back. And just, so if you wanted to go to interpretation, I guess. Yeah. So you might, you might see an application show up at some point. <laughs> and Who's I think this I guy? recognize that. Right. Ted, 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 Ted. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Does um, other general business? Do we have any other general business that needs to be on the agenda? That 
didn't make it on the agenda. I I would just like to. Um, I know that you haven't lost sight of it, Don. But I would I would like to. Um, well, what do you think about the RV park? I mean. It, well, I would think we're now on to PRAC member reports. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, do you want to talk about it for that? Yeah, that? actually, I did learn a little bit. Um, okay, so that would that would be my only piece of general business is that I I've had a conversation over email with with Don and 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 it's about the RV park and and we already know from Scott and Denise that. We have secured or identified money for the master, yeah, master plan, for a master plan for, correct me if I'm wrong, if it disappeared or, or has evaporated, for the RV park. We have the concept drawing. We've, we've had a briefing from Larry, and this has been, you know, 18 months ago or whatever. And Scott has told us that there's monies that are available for a master plan for an RV park. Okay. So... By doing a master plan, you find out how much the RV park or the improvement is going to cost. So that's an obvious step that needs to be taken. I mean, even if it's a simple, you know, we're not talking about, you know, trails everywhere or the entire park system. We're just talking about a master plan for the RV park. But that'll help us a lot. That'll allow us to determine a cost for it so that we can continue down the road in, in planning. But go ahead. Well, act, actually, do you want to cover it now or in your pre, in your well, mind? Um, yes and no. Um, I'll just be really brief. Okay. All right. Well, I let's include it under other general business. Okay. Then I will not have a report when we come to staff reports. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you want me to speak now? Yeah, that'd be great. Um, I did have um, more than one party stay there this summer for a while and um, learn a lot and I'll just put it this way there's opportunity for improvement before we ever even spend money on revamp of the park um, there's um, the people that stay there like it a lot and it's a lot more locals than I would have thought um, and I'd rather talk to the people that are involved with the park about some of the things I've learned than to discuss it in this forum. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll just, I think it's, up, I guess the, the view that I have is it's pretty optimistic. If you're going to look at a business and you're going to take over a business, you're going to buy it and you want to remodel it, the first thing you do is you look for opportunity that's uncovered that you're going to cover with the existing business as it is. Is there any lost opportunity there? And yeah, there, right. are, there is some. There's some room for improvement, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think the, the drawing. I really want to compare it with what's there and understand how far does that go towards John Storm ramp and how much more of that. Okay, so use. this. Right. Okay. Yep. So Scott I mean, sent us this a few months ago. I think you you probably could dig it up. That's the concept drawing by uh, uh, Lango Lango Hansen. Go ahead. And, you know, like questions that could come up are, is, you know, is that the actual perimeter that we have to work with, or can we really push that out? Could you put tent sites in which take up a lot less square footage than, you know, an RV site? Um, you know, there's a lot of bicyclists that come down the, through Oregon City, you know, traveling north to south in the U.S. And um, um, I'd rather, it's, it's, I have to be brief because a lot of the stuff that I, I, I have could be, I don't want to upset anybody, so let's, um, we'll move on. I'm done with my report. No, that's good. <laughs> so, yeah. Is this the actual perimeter? Can we expand yeah. other sites? Something... Something simple on the on the perimeter that wouldn't require a whole lot of of anything, but maybe just improving or or grading mm -hmm. to to allow for camping uh, least, other yeah. other than RV units. Yeah, in a, in a, in a, in a, a comprehensive understanding of, of a standing operating procedure for that facility. What's how's it really supposed to operate? Mm -hmm. um, and, and and really a discussion about the amenities and what's really possible. And some conversations were had, you know, how could we maybe be really innovative and do something nobody else is? You know, what could we really bring to that mm -hmm. part that would make it? You know, it's a pretty urban 
destination. Yeah, admittedly, I yeah. mean, honestly, I have a hard time understanding why people pay to stay under the 205 bridge, but lots of people do, mm -hmm. particularly on holiday weekends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think if we got you know our ducks in a row, we could really go out and start marketing that as a pretty cool property to, to an inexpensive, relatively inexpensive property. Um, I was really so shocked to hear that some of these RV parks are getting you know well the amenities obviously, but they're they're more expensive than hotel rooms. Mm -hmm. um, you know they're paying up to eighty five hundred dollars a night for some RV slots around the country. Mm -hmm. And um, it has to do with, you know, what does it have to offer? Well, in my opinion, and I'm biased because I'm a resident, but uh, that site right there, Clackamas Park, is so proximate to you know, local, to so mm -hmm. much other stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think we could do a really, a lot better job of, or do it, an effort to really make the, the people that are staying there aware of what's, you know, I've said it before, but what's up the hill? You know, because once they're down there, they're focused on the water. Mm -hmm. Clackamas Park, and mm -hmm. maybe even their eyes towards Gladstone is what it sounded like when I'm mm -hmm. talking to them. Um, so it, that's it's pretty exciting. Yeah, you know, there's a lot, yeah. of, a lot of bright light possibly. That's all yeah, and I see a lot of connectivity with what we're talking about with the trail systems too. You know, like you like you're talking about absolutely the signage down there and, mm -hmm. and everything else that and uh, marketing. Well, that's Oregon why City I'm here for this other. Uh, you know, because I really want to see the connectivity there, and I've said it a bunch of times, but you know, the Clackamas Cove there, and the way that's all connected, that finally the railroad bridge is back, that really crippled us for a long time riding bicycles, but if anyone's ever down on, I encourage you to go down to Verdict or whatever and have breakfast one morning and watch the cyclists that are coming by. There's a ton of, and cycle, the demographic of a cyclist is really interesting too. It, they're, they're a lot more educated and a lot more affluent than you would think. It's not the bad press that we get for what goes on downtown. Uh, a lot of pretty well-to-do, uh, professional, you know, responsible people ride a bicycle, and they're coming down to Oregon City, and it's kind of in a bit. You kind of get lost. You kind of really there's no real reasoning to the signage or anything unless you know where you're going. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens when when the street becomes two-way, the main street. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But it's I see all that as all relevant and, and, and yeah. interdependent, mm -hmm. and, and a whole lot of synergy could come from it if a bigger picture is considered when we when we go to redesign or spend any money there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sort of aligning, everything is aligning. Mm -hmm. And when Sportcraft is done, and with John Storm mm -hmm. right there, there's a huge amount of boat camp connection right mm -hmm. there too. Mm -hmm. Especially mm -hmm. if you go a little bit south into that green area you're talking about with some campsites, because mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of kayaking going on down there now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've been running trips to, to what they call, I've never heard the expression until then, but you know, Willie Falls. Oh. They're calling it Willie Falls in there. The guy's, um, he's running, you know, and I do know him admittedly, um, but he's, he was running probably six, eight trips, 10, 12 people at a trip up to the falls and back. And mm -hmm. it turns out to right. be a pretty cool trip, but people that I've known have done it have really liked it. You know, and I don't think anyone's ever really exploited that little, in that fashion, that mm -hmm. section of river right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did it last month, and it's a great trip. My oh, wife and I did oh, it. It's, it's a great trip. Oh, cool. they're, they're kayaking it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They take off from the dock right by Sportcraft. You're doing a rental there? Yeah. And then you go up, they, you actually go up into the lock as far as you, you care to go because there's a lot of water coming through that gate. That's yeah, there is. <laughs> a little scary. <laughs> and, and then you come out and you go up, uh, not to the white water part of the falls, but up pretty darn close and then come back on the other side. It's a it's a great trip and it's really reasonable. Not to throw in a commercial for the guy. But. So he leads you. Yeah, and they, you. and they do it very well. They've got three or four people with you, so there's somebody in front, somebody in the back, and a couple of people yeah. bird dogging yeah. to help <laughs> keep the motorized traffic, oops, motorized traffic away from you. Mm -hmm. They're doing a very, very nice job, yeah. and that's something that could, you know, tie in with the campground somehow mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. be promoted Absolutely. that way. Mm -hmm. so. We All went right. up into the locks, and uh, I think the water flow out of those cracks jumped up about thirty percent while we were in there. Wow! And um, we didn't waste much time getting out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's creepy. Why? You're down there. <laughs> yeah, I've stared down at the water, but I've never looked up. <laughs> and then when I, you know, because I, I get off my bicycle and I just kind of canvas who's standing there and find out what they're thinking and that kind of thing. And I ran into a guy 
whose boat trailer fell in the hole below the concrete slab Ooh. and he got stuck there and all I could say is you know we're working on that it's, it's getting <laughs> fixed you know so it's one of those conversations you just, you just stepped in mm -hmm. you know? I know that well yeah. <laughs> well there you have it okay so um before so so you you might even could, I, I'm seeing the process move forward it's gonna be there's gonna be a master plan but you you are, are potentially suggesting we do things before and then so we look at that and then we master plan and I see obviously Prack and you involved in that process as the RV subcommittee task force head Right. I'm looking at it more than that, though. I, I, yeah. I, I agree with you. Yeah. Totally. We, yeah. we were agreement when we first started talking about it. It's more than RVs, though. It really is. Right. Joking. Exactly. So too. RV slash whatever. I never yeah. noticed an open water swimmer, ever, until you guys mentioned in this committee. And now I see them every day. I can't believe I've never seen them before. But there are probably sometimes 40 or 50 people out there at a time yeah. swimming in that area. And I think all... You know, just to develop the RV park on its own is kind of myopic. I think you really mm -hmm. got to consider it all mm -hmm. and how it's going to gel when it yeah. gets, gets all put together. Mm -hmm. So being on that committee that we talked about earlier, watching how the paths connect, you know, and then the traffic flow. There are some problems a little bit with traffic flow down there, um, particularly the RV dump station causes some hiccups out there yeah, in that road. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's just one little example. But Good. Yeah, I'm swimmers, you're, swimmers you're seeing are in the cove, correct? Not, correct. Not the road. Yeah. No. Lots of like master swimmers. I, I know some of the guys that go down there. A friend of mine uh, trains for triathlons and uh, events right. like that, and he's yep. swam swims a lot down at the cove. Great, great place to train. Yeah, they're taking advantage of the weather right now for sure. And what I envision is you you could encompass, and there's probably more users than we've even thought of. There might be birders down there, you know, or whatever. But that you, when we go to um, figure out what the package is going to look like it would be with an eye on commerce or you know bringing more visitors to the area i'll bet that there are people in portland who have no clue you can come to oregon city and swim in flat water and it's really clean with no motorized traffic that's that big of a body of water i'll bet there there's a lot Practical of people who know that who maybe aren't quote you know open water swimmers yeah mm -hmm. don uh i didn't understand um, your source of information. Were you doing random interviews? I got the impression you had some personal acquaintances. Yes, all the above. There, all yeah, I live right above the fish market, to okay. make it simple. Um, and I spent a lot of time riding my bicycle down there trying to get lose some weight. And um, a lot of time just standing and watching how it all works. Um, I've had an interest in that property. I've been in that, we've owned our house for 12 years now. And it was before we bought the house, I was interested in that whole cove area. I thought it just was a fantastic place for a lot of things. Not just the cove, but from the locks on down. So I'm constantly having conversations with people about, you know, what do you think about it? Without letting them know, none of them, I haven't told anybody what, why I'm interested. I just, I'm a citizen. I didn't say anything about being on this committee. I'm sorry. <laughs> I tell you, since John Storm has been completed, and since the McLaughlin enhancement project was done, and since the trail's been in place there al along the cove, I frequent those areas as well. When they're, you know, I like mm -hmm. to run, and they're just great areas, mm -hmm. great flat areas to run. <clears throat> I never would have ran along McLaughlin Boulevard before. And then, you know, the, the way it connects to John Storm and Clackamas mm -hmm. Park, beautiful park. We ride right down, sometimes 7th, um, but right down in front of the uh, boat shop there, across the intersection there. Mm -hmm. And um, we ride all the way to the fountain in Portland and try to come, try to follow the river as much as you can. You have to get away and sell wood in some places. And um, if you've never done that, you really should. The, the, the city of Portland spent quite a bit of money. Um, uh, Milwaukee has, Selwood has, and, and, and I'm really excited to know that we are because it's a great ride and it's a very safe, relatively safe ride. You know, most of it's off of really fast streets and, and there's quite a few sections as you get closer to Portland that are extra, they're all completely off the street and um, if you've never done that, it's, 
I think you could start to see the vision if you ride from, you know, the railroad bridge in Portland all the way down to Oregon City. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I remember at one point, um, I think it was uh, kids, I don't know, it was Colin Gallagher, Governor Kugowski said that there were money to connect Eugene with where it stopped in Oregon City with a bike route that was going to continue all the way, follow the Willamette hmm. the whole way. And I wonder where that went and where we might be in that picture. But I know at a Cycle Oregon kickoff, they announced that and everybody was really excited about it. When was that? Oh, many years ago? Three. Three years ago? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Well, great, um, uh, Denise. Can we can we add RV RV Park or you know, for now we can call it the RV Park <laughs> to the to the agenda for last or for next the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Don. Okay. Uh, any other comments on that before we move on? Okay. All right, we're going to go to PRAC member reports. And let's start down there with uh, Ted. Ted, do you have a PRAC member report for us? Just uh, one uh, brief comment. I, I mentioned before that um, there were, there's that, that private property behind the Oregon City Shopping Center. Um, when I parked down there to, to run, there's this big pool of water. And recently, I had mentioned that, and you guys pointed out, Scott and yourself pointed out, that private, not city property. but. Recently, I, I noticed they've got that posted now to, to keep out of there, so I, I was glad to see that for what it's worth. Yeah. They were down there <coughs> several days. Uh, I, just because of Sportcraft Project, I drive by that, and there's been see people out there. Just walking, walking around. You know, I don't know if they're surveying the site for other things or, you know, just checking on the property. But the signs, some of them were disappearing. They're they're right back up. So I think they have an understanding of mm -hmm. making sure that's posted. And then um, that gate has been closed yet. That bar gate. Yeah. Was closed. Up closer to the overpass. There are transients that uh, I think. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's transients down there. They, they surprised us. Not this year, but last year we went berry picking, and they were oh, they right? were back there. So anyway, there's good berries there. There's good blackberries. <laughs> you surprised them too, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah That's we, did. <laughs> <laughs> we did. That's all for me. Uh, not much. Uh, I had opportunity to go to the swimming pool this morning, and it looks really good. I know we got that on the agenda. We talked yeah. about then, but looks good. I have nothing. Okay, and I've been to the pool too. It's awesome, so I'm looking forward to that report. Lynn, my notes from a couple of emails from Kathy are someplace near my computer at home, <laughs> <laughs> where they've been since last night. But uh, the major new project is a um, mapping project, which originates um, through a system developed by Oregon State University Extension Service. And it's called a mapping, but as I understand it, it required three different meetings, the first of which um, they were asking people who are very involved in the community uh, to take a camera. They were going to get, I think, a disposable camera. And it was their task to look at Oregon City through the eyes of seniors and to look at friendliness, usefulness, barriers that exist um, to all kinds of things, including transportation, nutrition, service access, um, cracks in sidewalks, you know, all kinds of very finite visual things that you can capture on a camera. And then, then there were to be two uh, follow-up meetings. I was asked to be a part of that, but with my huge commitments to my family and some other volunteer things. I, the dates they picked, I just couldn't do that. They will be having a follow-up meeting to which the community has been invited. And that's what I'm really missing from my notes. But I think it's October 6th from 5 to 8, or from 6 to 8. Do you have that, Denise, by any chance? I don't have that. I have an email from Kathy. And 
That's a Thursday. We can we can I, send that out. Is it, that would be helpful, yeah, because I feel kind of irresponsible about that piece because they would love mm -hmm. to have community input. And, and I'm kind of excited by the literal tool of using um, this camera. Um, kind of reminds me of like when you get high schoolers involved in creating documentaries with videos. And all of a sudden, you really see things through a different paradigm and so much more clearly. So it may hopefully um, add some ways to add to the quality of choices and limit some of the barriers that exist in current Oregon City. So that's kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. Sorry I couldn't be more participating. No, that's great. Thank you very much, Lynn. And I'm like, okay. All right, we are at number six right now. We're gonna take a uh, little bit of a break and we will reconvene in about five minutes. Does that sound good? Okay.